There's a line in the movie Ford vs. Ferrari that really stuck with me. Uh, Christian Bale is playing the part of a race car driver who's famous named Ken Miles and he's sitting with his son in a very kind of sentimental moment and he says to his son, somewhere out there is the perfect lap. Can you see it? And he's like, I've never done it, but it's out there. And he keeps aspiring to it. And I found that to be kind of poignant because for me, I feel like somewhere out there is the perfect surgery. Uh, and I keep aspiring to achieve it, but I'm not sure it's really ever totally achievable. In fact, what does a perfect surgery even mean, right? What's the perfect exposure? What's the perfect screw placement? Really what it comes down to is the convergence between what you're trying to achieve and what you actually achieve. But perfection and excellence in surgery is something that has kind of uh, enamored me for a long time and I've tried to get a better handle on how to achieve it. In this video, we're gonna talk a bit more about achieving perfection in surgery, understanding that it may never be fully achievable. Now, there's an important math problem that I ask my residents and fellows all the time that I'll kind of use to lay the foundation for it. And the question goes like this. How many people need to be in a room before the probability that two of them share the same birthday is 50%? So I'll repeat it. How many people need to be in a room before the probability that two of them sharing the same birthday is 50%. That's a question I'll leave you with and we'll get into it more to come. So let's think about this birthday analogy a little bit more before we get to the answer. So let's say you imagine a person standing in a room, right? There's a person out here, he's just standing in the room, kind of minding his own business. And another person walks into the room, right? The question becomes, what is the probability that this second person has the same birthday? It's about one out of 365, right? And let's assume there's no leap years. So the probability that they do not have the same birthday is 364, over 365. This is the probability that the second person does not have the same birthday. But now imagine a third person walks into the room, right? What's the probability this person has the, one of these birthdays? It's the difference, the probability that they do not is 363 over 365. In other words, you have to say one for this, one for this, you take both of them off. And this 363 over 365, obviously this continues. You can put another person here. The probability that this next person has neither of those birthdays is 362 over 365, et cetera. And this is how the math is done, right? And what this really illustrates, and the reason I think that this is relevant to surgery is because the first person walking in there's some dependence there. They're not independent events. You wanna look at this person, the probability they don't have the same birthday is 364 over 365. The next person, again, not independent. That number keeps changing because how these first two people stack up influences the numbers on the next one. So we call those dependent variables. These are not independent. In other words, this event is not independent of this event or independent of that. Unlike that, if you imagine flipping a coin, you flip a coin, the probability that it's a heads is one over two, the probability you flip it the second time has nothing to do with how the first one ended up. It's again, an independent variable, but these are dependent. And it turns out that if you multiply these terms out 23 times, the numerator becomes half of the denominator. So the answer to the birthday problem analogy is that it is 23 people. You have 23 people in a room and the probability that two of them shared the same birthday is 50%. That's surprising. Right? It's surprisingly low. Most people, when you ask them that question, they think, oh, 160 whatever to kind of split the 365. But it shows you the power of compounding dependence. So why do I ask this question? I ask it because it really amounts to thinking of surgery as a, uh, as a sequence of maneuvers. And it starts from planning and then positioning and then marking out the incision and then exposure. And if you think of surgery as a cascade of these series of maneuvers or series of stages, Think about how errors compound. Again, if you position someone poorly, it kind of screws up your planning, right? It screws up your incision. If you, if you have a poor incision, it screws up your exposure. If you screws up your exposure, it screws up your instrumentation placement. All of these things compound. Right? So if you imagine you're an incredible surgeon and you have the ability of achieving perfection, whatever that means, with every given maneuver of 99.7%, in other words, 364 over 365, if that's how good you are, the likelihood that you're gonna mark them perfectly is 99.7%, 
And then the next, and this next maneuver is the same thing. The probability of that next maneuver, you can, the, of doing a perfect job with the next step of, of exposure or the next step of instrumentation or the next step of decompression, every one of those things, you're an incredible surgeon, right? Then by the time you get to 23 maneuvers, the probability that something has gone awry is 50%. So aspiring to perfection really means not just aspiring to perfection in aggregate, but thinking that every single maneuver matters. Planning the patient's case properly matters. Making sure that you position the patient perfectly matters. Making sure that you do the perfect incision marking and exposure matters. Making sure that you put your instrumentation in correctly matters. Doing the decompression well, et cetera. Every single one of these steps matter. There's no approximation. Interestingly, it turns out, so if the number is one over 365. In other words, you're 364 over 365 of doing a perfect job, it's 23 maneuvers. But let's say you're 99% good. So let's imagine this. If you're 99% good with any given maneuver, then it turns out that within 12 maneuvers, there's a 50% chance. So that means only one out of 100 times you're gonna screw something up. If you're 95%, that means only one out of 20 times you're gonna do something that's not perfect, you go to six maneuvers before your rate is 50% of something not being right. You go to 90%, in other words, one out of 10 times. You're pretty good, one out of 10 times you're gonna mess something up, it's not gonna be perfect. Within four maneuvers, the probability of perfection has dropped down to 50%. The reason I think this is so important is not because we necessarily want to achieve perfection, but really to highlight the fact that every little step matters. Every, where you put the steroid rate matters, how you mark the patient matters, every one of these things matter. And if you hold yourself to a high standard with every single part of a procedure, you stand a chance at achieving perfection.